then to, well, to because you're opposed to nuclear power in principle. Well, no, it's not that I'm opposed to nuclear power necessarily in principle. I, I mean, I, I think that even from a business case, this makes sense. Nuclear right. power doesn't work. It's very, exp I mean, it, it, well, yes, it works. Of course it's, it works. It's a, and it's a base load uh, right. fuel source, but it's very expensive. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Coming up, President Obama is jetting off to Brazil. Critics say now might not be the best time to head south with so much chaos erupting around the world. And the FBI is after a criminal hacker ring that has been snagging private photos of Hollywood celebrities. Geraldo Rivera is investigating. In the Factor follow-up segment tonight, President Obama is heading down to Brazil with the family for a little spring break vacation. But some conservatives say he shouldn't be relaxing. World crises are exploding in Libya, Japan, not to mention the troubled American economy and budget problems right here at home. Do they have a point or is this just partisan sniping from Republicans? It's a good question. So joining us from Los Angeles, Fox News analyst and radio talk show host Leslie Marshall. And here in New York, Fox News analyst and New York Daily News columnist Andrea Tantaros. Andrea, let me start with you. Newt Gingrich says we don't have a commander-in-chief, we have a spectator-in-chief. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, that that's pretty much what it is. Look, I, I think this guy just has a priority issue. I mean, it seems like he's offering, uh, operating on a different set of priorities. And this isn't the first time. When he was trying to pass Obamacare, everyone was saying, what are you doing? This isn't the number one issue. Now, we've got a government that needs to be funded through a budget that he failed to pass last year. Republicans and Democrats are saying, where is this president? We've got issues in Libya. Also, he wants to cut defense funding, but now he wants to go into Libya. And he's heading to Rio. Look, I, I'm all for the president getting rest and relaxation. It's a demanding job. I just think he has a real perception issue, and he doesn't know when to stay here and not fill out the brackets, not go to Rio, not golf. I mean, come on, he should be smarter than that. Oh, come on. Well, anyway, Leslie, let me, t let, me let you respond to this. Leslie, in fact, the, one of the things that really caught my eye today was you had about more than 60 senators, a bipartisan group, saying to President Obama in a letter, we need your leadership. You should take a position on these budget negotiations rather than Mr. Serene, Mr. Khan, Mr. Cool, Mr. Aloof, lay back, I'm not in it, you guys settle it. What do you say, Leslie? Well, uh, first, first of all, one, he's not their daddy. I mean, he's the commander in chief. He put forth a budget that the Republicans don't like. The Democrats don't even like all of it. And he did say this is a beginning and they're going to have to work out the rest. That's their job to do. Regarding going to Brazil, this was planned a long time ago. It's not just a vacation. He is there regarding oil and technology, which we will benefit from greatly and even can have job creation. Let's not forget a lot of the contracts from the Gulf went to Brazil and hopefully in the future a trade deal because right now there is concern about China's currency and also the Brazilian manufacturers are complaining about the quality or lack thereof of Chinese goods. They're made cheaply and we can benefit in the long term from that. Uh, exporting our goods well, to Brazil. Let me, stay with, let me stay with that point. This is an interesting point. So, Andre, you're saying he shouldn't take the trip, or should he? Look, he's not, I'm not begrudging him for the vacation, but now... Vaca not, wait, 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 wait. Look, she didn't say vacation. Okay. She said right. he went down there... He wants to go there. down and talk about investment. That's right. With what money? Oh, I guess we'll just ask Japan to give us more money. Oh, wait, we can't ask the Japanese. No, no, wait a second, power. wait a second. Increasing exports with a growing economy in Brazil is what Leslie was saying. Yeah. Okay, he can work, but don't you think he could postpone the trip and deal with the real issues here? Well, there are always going to be look, issues. I, look, I think domestic issues, he's taken his eye off the ball again. I think U.S. interests need to be paramount, and I think that this guy just does not have U.S. interests at heart. He's got no discernible policy in the Middle East. He's cherry-picking which revolution to support. More and more. All right, all right. You're the changing. You're changing the time. You're cha wait, wait. You're changing the time. Let me go back no, to Leslie. No, it's still on leadership. All right. It's all right. still if it's on leadership, leadership, Leslie, come back to the leadership issue. You saw what happened today in Libya. Is he mm -hmm. again abdicating leadership? Which is Andrea's point that he's a weak leader. He's not the kind of leader that says, "Here's my, here's the orders, gentlemen. Let's move forward." 
I'm a liberal Democrat who wanted Hillary to be my president. He was my second choice, and I voted for him. And I have to say, when I heard him speak today uh, regarding Resolution 1973, he sounded the most presidential I've heard him speak in a long time. And I was like, that's what I want, President Obama. And I thought he hit it out of the park. You know what? When we look at Japan, sending the resources, the military, the money, helping as much as we can check. When it comes to Libya, we're with uh, the security resolution that was passed in the U.N. as a part of the U.N., uh, not leading it for a change, but working with allies such as Lebanon, Great Britain, France, and that's what we're doing there in, in Libya. All that's right, what right, he so said Andrea, he was going right, to do. That's check. a strong Great. case. That you made a strong case. Now, Andre, you just heard her say she heard a leader speak today, and she's saying there are real concrete outcomes in Libya, in Japan. Look, I, I don't have any criticism with on, him on Japan. I, I think he's hamstrung. I think he did what he needed to do, so I'm not going to beat him up on that. In Libya, though, he should have never come out. The minute he said Gaddafi must go, committed the prestige of the United States and did nothing to remove him and waited and waited and waited, he shouldn't have made that comment. Here's what I would have liked to hear from oh. him. He either comes out and he says, I don't want a third war. I don't want one more U.S. American boy or, or girl dying for this country. We've had enough. Or I'm going to go to NATO. I'm going to use my community organizing skills. I'm going to get everyone together, and then we're going to put together a resolution. I didn't hear that. Well, you did hear that. Wait, Leslie, isn't that what we heard today? No, we heard the Arab League wait. pressure him. No, no, no wait, wait. Let's ask France Leslie. Give Britain. Leslie a shot here. Yes, that's what, Hey, wait a minute. Ronald Reagan said that Gaddafi was a maniac in the desert, please. And I thought he was the god for the Republicans. The president today was clear. This is what we're going to do. This is why we're going to do it. And and you know what? He was given, he was criticized because he didn't stand up sooner and wasn't clearer about Hosni Mubarak stepping down. And now that he does do it, you guys are criticizing, criticizing him. Andrew, Andrew, come on. You know, well, you're just Andrew picking respond. on him no matter what he says. Let no, him. there's no, Leslie, there is no clear picture on where he stands in the Middle East. His finger goes up, and whatever way the wind's blowing, that's where he goes. Even Hillary Clinton came out and criticized him. And look, Ronald Reagan never, never came out and said Gaddafi must go and talked about removal without actually backing it. All right, so let Leslie respond quickly, Leslie. Bottom line, I disagree. I think he's very clear. He is on the side of democracy, and he is against the side of genocide. And that's why we're taking the actions we did All as right. a part of this I think more and more, ladies, and more ladies, and more we have to go. But let me this just say, the wrong job for that me. was an example of a fair and balanced debate <laughs> right here on Fox. Plenty more ahead as the factor moves along this evening. A new poll says that Americans don't think the Republicans are any more serious than the Democrats when it comes to reducing the deficit. We'll talk to potential GOP presidential contender Herman Cain about that. And later, Democratic Congressman Anthony Weiner is plenty worked up about the GOP threat to defund NPR. We'll show you his hysterical outburst on the House floor when we come right back. In the Unresolved Problems segment tonight, a brand new Fox News poll has some bad news for the Republican Party when it comes to getting the federal government's finances in order. Only 42 percent think the GOP is truly serious about reducing the budget deficit. And get this, 51 percent don't. The numbers are just a little worse for Democrats. 38 percent think they're serious, but 55 percent say the Democrats are not serious. So, should Americans trust the GOP to do the job? Joining us now from Denver, potential Republican presidential candidate Herman Cain. Herman Cain, I am struck by the fact that so many Americans, given the rhetoric coming from the Republican Party, given the Tea Party revolution, still say they don't trust Republicans to reduce the deficit. What do you have to say? Well, what I have to say is people have to remember that the Republicans only control one branch of the government. That's the House of Representatives. They don't control the Senate. They don't control the White House. And the leadership for being serious must come from the White House. And I think that the, the letter that you referred to earlier indicates that because Democrats and Republicans are saying, 
We are not, 535 members of Congress, Juan, are not going to do what I call fiscal surgery. That's what is going to be required. Now, here's what the Republicans did not do. They have not done a good job of explaining to the American people what they can and cannot do relative to the budget. And so the perception that's reflected in that poll is that they ought to be able to move mountains when they don't control all of the mountains. But Herman tops. King, that's wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you know, we get Republicans on the factor and immediately they want to point a finger at President Obama. But why don't you talk about Republican responsibility here? Why aren't Republicans talking about the need for entitlement cuts, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense spending, and making that case to other Republicans? Well, I don't know why they are not talking about it, but Herman Cain is talking about it. I gave 20 speeches last week in Iowa, New Hampshire, uh, Georgia, Texas, and I talk about entitlement spending because we've got to go from an entitlement society to an empowerment society, and I've got ideas about how we do that. We, we are not going to cut spending until we do fiscal surgery. Look, one, you know I, I had cancer surgery. They took out part of my colon and part of my liver. That's serious surgery. You're not going to get that kind of surgery in Washington, D.C. until you have a president who's willing to do what I call horizontal cuts and vertical cuts. When you do vertical cuts, like I did at Godfather's Pizza, you go into each department and agency and identify whole programs. All right, the hold reason on. that they are hold not on, making hold any on. progress. Herman King, we have not heard any of these big cuts coming from Republicans yet. They're, they're focused right now on all these continuing resolutions. And just today, President Obama, before he took off, signed another continuing resolution to keep the government working for another three weeks. But he has not been able to respond to any big cuts in terms of entitlement spending being proposed by Republicans because they haven't proposed any. One, the president hasn't proposed any either. That's true. That's okay. where the leadership... So, okay, your point's well taken. So which side goes first? And is this just a game of both sides saying, I'm not going to go first because I don't want you to attack me and tell your followers that I'm the bad guy because I proposed the cuts first? The president should go first because the president should show the leadership on being serious about the cuts. So he really should be the one to go first. If I were president, I would go first because that's what is expected of a leader. The Republicans have put some things on the table, Juan, and I think that it's quite frankly unfair to say that they are not serious about budget cuts. Remember, the president initially put $6 billion on the table. The Republicans put $61 billion on the table. Right, right. But and what the are president we talking about, Herman? What are we, we're talking about a little sliver of the federal budget. We're not talking about the big entitlement spending that's really going to amount to substantial reductions in spending. But, you know, I hear you. I think that the president's going to have to do something. I think he should demonstrate leadership. But you're running for president, and you know that no politician that wants to get reelected is going to give his opposition ammunition. And that's what the president thinks he'd be giving Republicans ammunition. Well, Ron, Ron what I was going to say was that the $61 billion wasn't enough. But the president put $6 billion on the table and called that meeting the Republicans halfway. Look. The approach that's being used by both the Republicans and the Democrats right now, trimming around the edges, is not going to do some serious fiscal surgery like we need. This is why I am proposing, and I would use what I call horizontal cuts, a given amount across the board of all the federal agencies, and vertical cuts. This is when you do the deep surgery. They are not doing the deep surgery right now. Well, I Neither think party is. You Warren. know what? The American people agree with you with regard to both the Republicans and the Democrats. Although I must say, you know what? They have more faith in Obama than they do in either of the parties, which is a surprise to me. Mr. Kane, thanks well, so much for coming in. You're welcome, one. Directly ahead, Geraldo Rivera on a criminal hacking ring that is stealing personal photos of high-profile celebrities. And Congressman Anthony Weiner goes berserk on the House floor talking about the prospect of defunding NPR. We'll play that for you. Upcoming. The One Cable News Show, 11 years.
Rogers and County. The O'Reilly Factor. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Juan Williams in for Bill O'Reilly. And in the Fridays with Geraldo segment tonight, according to the website TMZ, the FBI is investigating a criminal hacking ring that has been stealing some very personal photos of Scarlett Johansson, Miley Cyrus, Vanessa Hudgens, and Jessica Alba. Geraldo Rivera has been looking into the, I don't know, should I say that, Geraldo? Looking into the <laughs> yeah, situation? Why not? Why not? Are you looking? All right. I'm all right. Pe peeping. I'm peeping into peeping, it. Peeping. All right. And Geraldo <laughs> is here. He joins us. But before we get to that, I'd like to get your thoughts on what's been going on. Libby, you heard the debate earlier. Two sides of this debate. So you watched this afternoon when the president was speaking. What'd you think? Well, you know, I have been extremely, extremely hesitant to endorse the United States getting involved in leading yet another attack on yet another Arab Muslim country. Right, right, I right. thought it was an extremely bad idea. At least Britain and France now have provided the United States with enough cover. Hopefully they'll provide some hardware, put some of their asses on the line so it's not us that's doing all the heavy lifting yet again in what will be an extremely difficult situation. People are absolutely, uh, and I heard Colonel Peters at the top of the show, low-balling what this entails. Secretary Gates is absolutely right. Secretary of Defense Gates is absolutely right. This is like the tar baby. Once you hit it, you can't get it off your hand. I know. What's going to happen? But, you know, they have frozen assets. There's an embargo against buying Libyan oil. I think it could destabilize that government. So it may. So you're saying you actually were encouraged by what you heard from the 